a dance group performs in front of the presidential palace in Santiago de Chile. Everyone's in good spirits, including Fernando Nilo. He founded Chile's first recycling company, and business is booming. He's enjoying himself here, but is actually in a hurry to get to his next appointment. <laughs> Fernando Nilo and his brother arrive at the economics ministry. Just a few years ago, such a meeting would have been unthinkable. But now he's come to speak with a high-level official about his recycling concept. Eco-friendly use of resources has become a priority in Chile. Fernando Nilo's Recicla has meanwhile become a standard bearer in the field. But the early years were difficult. Many thought the company was doomed to fail. But now, Recycla is thriving. Actually, we are recycling between 3 and 5 percent, and our dream is to reach at least 50 percent of the e-waste generated in Chile. The company premises are on the outskirts of the city. The yard is filled with monitors and PCs that once would have ended up in the rubbish heap. Now, businesses pay Recycla to dispose of them in an eco-friendly way. Nilo's firm tries to recycle as much of the material as possible. In the process, the company provides jobs for many people who would otherwise have little chance on the labor market because of their lack of training, a criminal record, or their age. I like it because it's a different kind of work. I used to be a miner. I'm glad I could switch from the mines to this work. The four months here in the firm were pretty hard. Going to work in the morning and returning to jail to sleep at night. I spend too much money and that's stressful for me. The money I earn here doesn't cover many of my costs. Nilo gave this worker his first chance after eight years in prison for robbery. Nilo's company trains its workers in skills they can use later on the job market. Much of the work is done by hand. The scrap material from old appliances is valuable and some of it can be reused. In memory, this, the, the circuit board printed board, the power supply, hot drive, and different parts. So all the, everything is recyclable, OK? At an art center in the middle of town, Fernando Nilo took part in designing a section of an exhibition on waste prevention. His display shows how much electrical scrap is produced. A group of students stops by. <laughs> they aren't familiar with recycling, so they're surprised to find out that scrap material can be used to produce useful things. Many companies have warehouses on the outskirts of the city. Most of them dispose of their waste without sorting it for recycling. But Fernando Nilo has convinced some of them to change their ways. He picks up 22 tons of electronic scrap from this construction market chain each year for a fee. People who are hoping to process their waste free of charge create another set of problems. We've chosen to pay, and we do that because we believe the world has changed and because our customers want us to take care of the environment, our workers and our communities. It took three years for Recycla's operations to get off the ground. Fernando Nilo and his family had to deplete their savings to survive. Many companies couldn't understand why they were being asked to pay to dispose of their electrical waste. But Nilo continued to promote recycling and finally won some major clients. 
Nilo stays in close contact with his customers, often meeting them for lunch to talk over new projects. His mission is to help the environment while creating jobs in the process. But he's had to cope with many setbacks. His main office was destroyed in an earthquake several months ago. Now he's in a financial crunch, but plans for new projects are already underway. We are acting local, but the problem is global. The same uh, need, could, we can work on it everywhere. Fernando Nilo has already opened small offices in Mexico and Colombia with plans to expand the recycling business throughout Latin America.